What we will do first here is add an additional labeled angle right there. We'll just call it alpha. And we will see why that's important in a moment. But then we want to read this statement here. It says one runner is running three times as fast as the other. We can see that this runner is the faster one because he's ahead of the other runner. And if we were to call this distance right here T, so this would be basically the distance covered by the slower runner in a time T, well, then the faster runner would cover three times as much distance because his speed is three times the speed of the slower runner. So in other words, if the slower runner travels a distance of t, then the faster runner would travel a distance of 3t. So those are some important labels to keep in mind. Next, what we want to do is focus our attention on that larger right triangle. We might want to outline it here in blue just so we can visualize it. So this right triangle right here becomes pretty important. And what we can see is that the angle right here, this large angle, that angle would be the sum of theta and alpha. And what we're going to do is find the tangent of that angle. So the tangent of theta plus alpha, well, we know that tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. Ask yourself, what is the length of the side opposite of this angle right here? And if you go to the opposite side, it would be that side there, which we have labeled 3t. So we shall enter in 3t for the opposite side, and then you're going to put that over the adjacent side, and the side that is adjacent to this angle right here is the side labeled 1. So we'll just have 3t over 1. Now, that's pretty good, but it turns out that to simplify the left side of this equation, we're going to need to introduce this identity, which you may have learned about in a pre-calculus course. And so, here is that identity in this case, the capital A is going to represent the theta, and the capital B is going to represent the alpha. So if we follow this identity, we can then simplify or at least rewrite the left-hand side. And as we will see, this will be quite useful to us. So we're going to plug in theta for capital A and then alpha for capital B. This would give us tangent of theta plus tangent of alpha, and then put this over 1 minus tangent of theta tan times tangent of alpha here. And then remember, this is still equal to 3t over 1. Now, if we look back at our picture, we can derive an expression next for the tangent of alpha. The problem right now is that this expression contains two variables. It's got the alpha and the theta. We only want to get this in terms of theta. So we need to substitute something in for these tangents of alphas here. And then we can do that by looking at this sort of skinnier right triangle right here. And if we look carefully, we can see that the tangent of that angle alpha would equal the opposite side. So the side that's opposite of alpha within that right triangle is this side t. And then you divide that by the adjacent side, which again is 1. And since it's just a 1, we can actually just omit it because t over 1 is still t. So in other words, tangent of alpha can be replaced with t. So we're going to go ahead and make that substitution. And that is nice because it now gets rid of that tangent of alpha, essentially. And then the next thing we're going to want to do is try to solve this equation for tangent of theta. And we knew to do this, of course, because if we look back at the question, it says, hint, maximize tangent of theta. So we're going to take them at their word and try to maximize tangent of theta. But before we can do that, we have to solve for the tangent of theta. And so perhaps the best way to do that is to cross multiply. So we're going to multiply this way, and then we're also going to be multiplying that way. So if we multiply the blue terms, we'll have 3t multiplied by 1 minus tangent of theta times t. And then the green, when we multiply, you'll just have tangent of theta plus t. Remember, your goal right now is to solve for tangent of theta. Why don't we distribute this 3t here? So 3t times 1 is just 3t. And then the 3t times that t is 3t squared. And then you have tangent of theta. Now, to solve for tangent of theta, we would want to gather all the tangent thetas to one side. So that's what we're going to do next. And then we'll subtract and gather all the sort of t terms to one side. So we'll subtract the t from both sides. This gives us 2t. And then we're going to add this term 3t squared tangent of theta 
to both sides, 3t squared tangent of theta. So that's going to give us tangent of theta plus 3t squared tangent of theta. And it looks like we've gathered the tan thetas successfully to one side. And so now you can factor out a tangent of theta. And then this will leave you with 1 plus 3t squared. Finally, divide by that term, that 1 plus 3t squared. And this will now successfully isolate tangent of theta. And now we are ready to follow the hint. Remember, the hint was to maximize the tangent of theta. So one way of doing that is to just let tangent of theta be f of t and because now we would just have a simple function in terms of t and it turns into a simple sort of optimization question in which we have to find the maximum value of f of t and you may remember that to find the maximum value of a function what we need to understand is that at that maximum value the slope of the tangent line there would be zero so this would mean that f prime of our function or f prime of our variable, excuse me, would equal zero. So in other words, the slope of the tangent line there would be zero. So we have to find the slope, and that's going to require the quotient rule. And when I do a quotient rule, I like to use the following little mnemonic formula, mnemonic device. It's what I call fig minus gif divided by g squared. Now when using that, what you're doing is you're letting the top function equal your f and the bottom function equal your g. So when we follow this along, it says f prime right here that would be the derivative of the f function, the top function. And of course the derivative of 2t is just 2. And then you multiply that by g, which is our bottom function. And then subtract, it says g prime right there, so that's going to be the derivative of g, and that would be just 6t. And then multiplied by just f, which is 2t. And then we put that over g squared. And this is now equal to our derivative, our f prime of t. We can simplify the numerator by distributing the 2. So that's going to give us 2 plus 6t squared minus, and then we multiply these together, we get 12t squared. And remember, since we're going to be finding the maximum, we're going to be setting the derivative equal to 0. So you can now plug 0 in for that derivative. And you still have the bottom stuff here. We can simplify the numerator, 6t squared minus 12t squared is a minus 6t squared. And now we wish to solve for t. And we can do another cross multiplying here. If we put the 0 over 1, then we can cross multiply that way, and then cross multiply that way. That's nice, because 0 times this denominator is going to give us 0. And then for the green, we have 2 minus 6t squared times 1, which is just 2 minus 6t squared. So this will be set equal to 0. We can subtract 2 from both sides divide both sides by negative 6. We reduce, that's going to give us 1 third, and then take the square root here. And when you square root, you're going to get the square root of 1 over the square root of 3, which is just 1 over the square root of 3. And then if you wish to rationalize the denominator, you can multiply the top and bottom by radical 3. So now we have what is called a critical point. We know t is equal to radical 3 over 3. And this will actually be the value of t that maximizes the function. Therefore, it maximizes the value of tangent of theta. Some teachers would want you to sort of prove that this indeed maximizes the function. And probably what many of us have learned is to prove that by using a first derivative test. And what we do there is we plot our critical point on a number line. And then we choose a value of t that is less than radical 3 over 3 as well as greater than radical 3 over 3. One value would be, one value that's less than radical 3 over 3 is 1 half. So what you would do is you would plug 1 half into the derivative. And I'll leave that as an exercise for you. You would have to go back and plug it into the derivative, which was this expression right here. But if you do plug that into the derivative, what's going to happen is you're going to get a positive answer. So you can just say that the value is going to be positive or greater than zero. This would tell us that the function is increasing all the way up to that critical point. And then we would plug in a number that is larger than our critical point. So that might be 1. And if you plug 1 into the derivative, you will find that you get a negative result. And that means that the function is decreasing beyond the critical point. And then you can see that indeed we have a nice maximum. 
And so that proves via the first derivative test that f of t, which remember was the tangent of theta, is maximized, we'll just say maxed, when t is equal to radical 3 over 3. But let's make sure we've answered the question. We go all the way back. And it says, find the maximum value of the observer's angle of sight theta. Okay, so we haven't found theta yet. We're going to need to find an expression for that somewhere in here. And, aha, there it is. So this expression right here is going to help us find theta. So since we're here, we'll just kind of come on the side here. We know that t is radical 3 over 3, so we're going to plug that in for the value of t. So now you have tangent of theta equals 2 times, you plug in radical 3 over 3, and then put that over 1 plus 3 times radical 3 over 3, and then don't forget to square that. And then if we simplify the denominator, you're going to get 2. So this is actually 2 multiplied by root 3 over 3, and then that's going to be all over 2. Those 2's cancel, and so now we basically just have tangent of theta is equal to radical 3 over 3. And perhaps we recall that when tangent of theta is equal to radical 3 over 3, then theta itself is going to be a 30 degree angle, which in radians is pi over 6. So you can report your answer either as degrees or as radians. Either way, those would be the correct answers for the value of theta. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it. But, of course, don't feel obligated. Appreciate you taking the time to watch regardless.